show with me, Joe. It's Window Wandering Wednesday, the show where we look out beautiful villas and we find out what's happening around the world. Let's wander. It's the Joe Show. Welcome to Window Wandering Wednesday, the show where I talk about business, science, pretty much all the big headlines that we can find. We're looking out at some cool places around the world. Today, I'm thinking that we're going to talk about mushrooms, we're going to talk about Snapchat, we're going to talk about killing cancer, and more. So let's pull up our first window. And here we are in Kaliningrad, Russia. A nice sunny day to talk about mushrooms. I subscribe to this newsletter and today they sent one out that involves the topic of mushrooms which I am actually very interested in and I'm not talking about just the psychedelic kind man woo, going on a trip I'm talking about the mushroom industry as a whole and it's big actually much bigger than you would expect uh, it says here the global fungi or mushroom industry is forecasted to double in the next five years to a staggering a staggering huge 86 billion dollars the growth will be powered by two things this newsletter predicts an increase in culinary demand so people want to use mushrooms in dishes or in food in general uh, and also a rising adaptation by the pharmaceutical industry so in pharmaceuticals uh, pushed by states like oregon and the united states beginning to legalize the regulated use of psilocybin aka psychedelic mushrooms as a treatment for anxiety addiction and or depression and there's lots of research out out there that is showing the benefits of using mushrooms to treat these uh, diseases or these uh, mental maladies uh, anxiety addiction depression psilocybin can increase or even elongate recovery um, elongating meaning you are happier longer uh, if you have a couple doses of psilocybin mushrooms and in culinary demand uh, there's been a utilization of mushrooms in new and interesting ways for coffee alternatives if you look at the business called four sigmatic uh, I, I just found out that they i believe are based in finland a friend of mine really likes their coffee and there's also alcohol free spirits now being created using mushrooms i actually did not know that that's really cool i wonder if they get you I guess like drunk feeling do they have psychedelic mushrooms incorporated into them is that is that I guess what is going on here is that instead of the alcohol it's got mushrooms and then you're just getting high while you're while you're drinking uh, getting high meaning getting getting going on a trip uh, that's pretty interesting um, they also point out uh, some other trends here with mushrooms like how uh, companies such as sportswear brands adidas and Lululemon are using mushroom, mushroom, oh my god, mushroom based textiles to develop the next generation of sustainable fashion. Pretty rad. Uh, how the 11, uh, 11, 117 billion dollar agro tourism industry is taking advantage of this new mushroom hunting craze. So people, I guess, are going out into nature and traveling on agricultural tourism or agritourism. I've never heard of that before. And it's a, a, a 100, it looks like 11, a 117 billion dollar agritourism industry taking advantage of this new mushroom hunting craze. Very cool, didn't know about that. Uh, I'll have to look into agro, agritourism. Um, it's not something that I, I am familiar with, but uh, hey, if you're enjoying my wandering mind, why don't you, hey, if you're enjoying, hey, thanks for enjoying my wandering mind. If you Hey, thanks for enjoying my wandering mind. If you like this content, hit that subscribe button and mash that bell to get a notification every time I upload a new video. Thank you. At $117 billion, it's clearly a large industry. Um, and opportunities with this, within this growing market uh, are all over the place. You can, you can identify them in textiles and food in actually mushroom hunting. Uh, and probably other uses that we're not even thinking of incorporating them. I know that there was a, we were looking at a project here at the place 
uh, where I'm working in the construction field and in the construction field um, I, I've been learning a lot about s concrete and how it's made uh, and pretty much it is made from cement which is like limestone powder uh, cement is is a part of concrete it's a powder um, that actually binds everything together so you got the cement the aggregates which are like you know rocks like actual pebbles and rocks and stuff uh, you got water, uh, and then you have uh, some sort of um, uh, binder, I believe, uh, and that's it. It's or sand. You get sand for the fine particles, the aggregates, which are the pebbles, the cement, which is the the lime, ground up limestone, and then water. Uh, and also, one fun fact about concrete is that it is actually uh, the the reaction is caused by hot, uh, water. So if you make it very wet when it is uh, curing or hardening uh, it becomes even harder uh, it doesn't necessarily increase the strength you have to get the right mixture between cement aggregate and uh, and water uh, and sand but uh, it definitely uh, water in this situation helps make it harder which is contrary or, or like the opposite of what my brain would have thought about concrete but you can actually mix, mix in mushroom particles as well into concrete and um, there's tests done where if the concrete begins to crack and you have these mushroom particles in there they actually kind of like sprout and and uh, not sprout they um, what is the word for mushrooms pollinating or, or yes yeah, sp sp spitting out their seeds oh man I can't remember germinate Maybe that's the word. We'll just say sprout. The mushrooms sprout and they fill in the cracks and it actually reinforces the concrete internally uh, if you put these uh, these mushroom particles in there, which is which is pretty cool. So mushrooming, $86 billion uh, growing on the back of agritourism and also on the back of legalization and in the general culinary food uh, market. Very interesting business opportunities in mushrooms. Now you know a little bit more about the industry of uh, going on a trip of psilocybin mushrooms. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so thanks, Russia, for uh, helping us talk about mushrooms. Let's grab a new window here and see where it takes us. Just a window in South Korea from Park. Park, a very common last name in South Korea. So this is Park's window over in South Korea where we, where we are going to talk about Snapchat and how they're beginning to fight against TikTok. Here we are, it is a top-down view over in South Korea of a street, a uh, pretty cool building in the front of it. Um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the view. Uh, Snapchat here launches TikTok-like feed called Spotlight. It's kickstarted by paying its creators. So Spotlight is Snapchat's new TikTok-like feed that lets users watch short, entertaining videos in a vertically scrollable video format. If you haven't used TikTok, it is a very popular app. I don't know how you've avoided it, but it has short, catchy, vertical videos that you can swipe up on. And then when you swipe up, it goes to a new video. It becomes very addicting because the secret sauce of TikTok is their algorithm, which is insane. It knows what you want to watch before you know what you want to watch. It's an extremely good algorithm. But back to Snapchat, it will showcase the community's creative efforts with Snapchat's algorithms surfacing the most engaging snaps or showcases, spotlights, <laughs> To show uh, to each user on a personalized basis, snaps in the new feed will be ranked according to a combination of factors, including negative factors. In a similar system to what TikTok uses for its For You feed, Spotlight will feature snaps from both private and public user accounts. Snaps from private accounts will have user information removed. The Spotlight feed will be moderated according to Snapchat's new Spotlight guidelines and they're also kickstarting it by having paid creators as part of their spotlight program so they have creators which they're paying to make content daily for spotlight an attempt in, in an attempt to get people on board quicker uh, as a lot of these platforms do a lot of like the streaming platforms new streaming platforms will um, have a couple original shows but then have a catalog of, of like of uh, tried and true programming, which I think is what uh, Spot uh, Tick, oh my God, Snap is going for here, is that they're trying to have a tried and true uh, influencer base to st kickstart their Spotlight feature, and so they're paying their creators um, to actually make snaps, uh, which is very interesting. Usually, also on a note, Snapchat is 
the product development arm in the industry for Facebook. Uh, so Facebook was stealing a lot of their product ideas from Snapchat and this is the first time where Snapchat is stealing someone else's idea but uh, I think it was unavoidable at this point. Every social media platform including Instagram uh, has now moved into some vertical video like Snapchat. On Instagram it's or like TikTok. On Instagram it's called Reels. On Snapchat it's called Spotlight. So if you're a Snap user you can enjoy that. It is I think already launched now. Uh, I have been a Snapchat user. I like Snapchat because it's not linked to Facebook or China. So in my book, uh, it's a, the winning one because, uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about Mark Zuckerberg tracking our every move and we don't have to worry about how China can potentially weaponize uh, our information against us for propaganda purposes. So let's see here. Let's grab a new window. Say goodbye to South Korea. Thanks, Park, for the lovely view here. We got New Delhi, India, Gopal's window. Let's see what we got to talk about cancer cells in mice and how scientists have killed the cancer cells in a world first development. This is incredible. Uh, here we are at uh, Gopal's window in India. A uh, nice green window. A study by scientists from Tel Aviv University, New York University and Harvard Medical School describe a new technique that can accurately target cancerous cells and kill them. Murder them, remove them, take them out, assassinate them, while leaving the healthy cells alive. The technique relies on DNA editing tools, I'm guessing things like CRISPR. Uh, it, it involves physically cutting the DNA in a cancerous cell, which effectively kills it. The technique has been successfully used in mice and the scientists believe it can be used in humans within the next two years. That's incredible. So within two years, we could potentially have some sort of cure or stop for cancer just by editing the DNA of the cell. This is actually incredible information. I hope, beyond hope, that this is true and that we can uh, move into this faster uh, rather than slower because cancer is, is a, I mean, it's a bitch. No one, no one wants their family to get it. No one wants themselves to get it. Uh, and it's something that we really truly don't understand and can't stop as it is just a mutation of cells uh, rapidly, uh, mu not mutating, rapidly reproducing out of control, uh, which causes cancer. So that is uh, a huge world first and a huge development. Uh, I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but uh, yeah, so scientists kill cancer cells. Thank you, uh, Harvard Medical School, New York University and Tel Aviv University. This is, this is incredible. Um, Another fun story here, uh, keeping uh, in the positivity, helicopter pilot finds a strange monolith in a remote part of Utah. Interesting, a strange monolith in a remote part of Utah. Utah, famous for Salt Lake City and their Mormons, uh, but state employees counting sheep from a helicopter. <laughs> oh man, incredible. They weren't trying to sleep. To, they weren't counting sheep to try to sleep. They were literally counting sheep from a helicopter, probably to make sure that the herd was still intact and wasn't being attacked by a, a, a wolves or something. Uh, so state employees counting sheep from a helicopter uh, in a remote part of Utah recently spotted a mysterious structure estimated to be between 10 feet and 12 feet high planted in the ground. The mysterious monolith is made from some sort of shiny metal. Images of the monolith along with pictures of the sheep that were being counted are available in the article. The exact location of the monolith hasn't been revealed due to fears of amateur explorers getting stuck in the wilderness while attempting to find it. Let's open up Google here and see where exactly this monolith is located or I guess what it looks like because they're not showing us exactly what it is. Um, Sounds kind of fun though. What is this monolith? Doing sheep, but doing it for science. Probably to count the sheep, yeah, to make sure that the herds were okay or to see if they're endangered or whatever. Counting the bighorn sheep. And then boom, they just find this giant, it looks like a big metal, like a thin metal sheet just stuck in the ground. Um, and they're saying it's 10 feet tall, but I mean, this picture looks like 
they landed and took a picture of it because it looks like whoever was taking this picture is actually on the ground. It does. I thought it was going to be like an aerial view, but it's not. It's it's someone standing on the ground who took a picture of this. And it also looks like there's some rivets on the side of it. Um, what an interesting thing. Why, what is, why is it there? What a weird thing. Uh, here's another video of this thing. It looks like they're flying. Yeah, they did land and now they're checking it out here in this video. I'm making it bigger so that we can see it. It's just stuck in like a remote part of Utah. Oh dang, this is not as thin as I thought it was. This is pretty thick actually. Wow, that's crazy. This guy's talking about it. Let's go back to it. Look at it. Look at that thing. It's a huge metal slab. Like this is probably at least a foot deep. Like as far as the depth of the object. I thought it was like a thin sheet, but it's actually like a foot deep. And it's just jammed into the ground. Like how it even got into the ground, I don't know. But what a what a crazy thing for them to find of some sort. Like, wow, oh, man, that's so cool. So, yeah. Don't know if it was aliens, but it was probably aliens, you know? <laughs> or just some sort of weird art piece. Uh, back to the, the window here in India. Uh, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's uh, grab a new window here for the last story. Ewan and Nisi's window over in Dublin, Ireland. Dublin. Have some Guinness. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, there's a window. <laughs> it's just a wall. This is clearly the Balarney Stone. No, it's not, but it's just a wall with a bunch of vines on it. Enjoy the view uh, as we talk about nanobots. Speaking of killing cancer, nanobots will be flowing through your body by 2030. And you know, they've been talking about this and I've been hearing about this since I was a, like a teenager. How we were going to have little tiny robots in our veins uh, that are policing our blood for viruses or bacteria and killing them with laser beams inside our body just flowing through us, protecting us or giving us, I don't know, uh, vitamins, minerals, whatever it is, nutrition. Uh, but let's find out here. Nanobots that can protect your biological system and ensure that you have a good long life could already or could be working inside you within the next 10 years. Oh, that's exciting. Nanobots. Uh, DNA robots are already being tested in animals to seek out and destroy cancer cells. Oh, so they're DNA robots. So that means that they are, quote, programmable. DNA strands or program programmable viruses. So they're not actually robots, it's bio-robotics. Uh, meaning that we program something that's biological, like a virus or bacteria, we hijack it, tell it what to do, and then it does what we want it to do in our body. Uh, researchers believe that the nanobots could soon deliver drugs to humans with a higher degree of accuracy, allowing exact dosages where needed and potentially preventing harmful side effects. They can be used also to treat and monitor a, a wide range of medical issues. This is very cool. I didn't know that we were already putting nanobots inside of animals, but I'm not surprised. And I'm fairly positive it's not actual robotics, but it is um, bio uh, nanobotic, biological nanobots. Uh, pretty rad. I'm excited for that. I'll, I'll take it. If they can protect us against diseases and viruses and even maybe even eliminate stuff that we already have in our bodies, uh, I think that would be very, very cool. So I'm hoping that we got nanobots soon. And I keep talking about this, but I definitely see a split in humanity coming up soon. Um, where some people are going to take a mechanical route and some people are going to take a biological route or maybe even combine it. But there may be a split in humanity where we go cybernetic and we go uh, gene editing and there's going to be a, a, a war between the two on who is superior to who. We're going to have um, uh, uh, Homo uh, Biologicus and Homo Cyberneticus. Uh, or we'll have uh, the ultimate creature, which is uh, Homo Hybridus. <laughs> Just making up terms over here. Yeah, interesting. Very, very cool, though. And then one little, I guess, story here. Elon Musk overtakes Bill Gates to become the world's second richest person behind Jeff Bezos. Ech, gross. I don't know why Elon Musk annoys me, he just does, but Elon Musk is now the world's second richest person with a net worth of around 
128 billion dollars. I think billionaires at that level, like a hundred billionaires, like there's no reason any one person person should have that much wealth, while there's other people suffering to not have education, to not have medical treatment, to not I don't know suffering in any sort of way with I guess ridiculous yeah debts, student loan debts. Like how how do we still have this sort of disparage disparagement of, of classes between people? It's just it's absolutely insane to me. I love the value that the the people have created for world the world with Amazon and with what Tesla and Microsoft and all this stuff, but uh, the the value doesn't outweigh basic human decency. Of like, why does someone need that much money? Uh, at, at what point is it just like egregious and and needs to go back to the government or needs to go back to the people? Uh, it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. But uh, good on Elon Musk, I guess, for getting to be the world's second richest dude. Uh, uh, under uh, or beneath Jeff Bezos. I don't think anyone will pass up Jeff Bezos. Amazon is just, it, it's become the United States of Amazon instead of the United States of America, if we're going to be honest. USA stands for the United States of Amazon at this point. And yeah, that's been all of today's news. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. We talked about uh, all sorts of stuff, cancer killing, uh, drugs. We could talk about uh, disease killing nanobots roaming inside our bodies. We saw an awesome monolith over in, U- in Utah and discussed how the mushroom industry is blowing up and you got to get in on it now before it's too late if you're an entrepreneur interested in mushrooms. That's been today's Joey Show. If you like my content, tell a friend about me. Send me to somebody you love or leave me some love in the comments. I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button and mash that bell to get a notification every time I upload a new video. Send stuff to Show at gmail.com. Help me grow this community and this channel. In the meantime, I hope you wander somewhere cool. Until next week, because you know it, I love you.